I loved the film. It was like, like yeah. such a delight. And um, I have to say, I am definitely like, I, I grew up on like musical theater. Uh, my mom loves musicals. So I grew up going to musicals. I grew up in LA, but we went to New York a lot because she, I ended up going to actually NYU for film school a little before the film starts. I graduated in 2004. So, oh, <laughs> so it, it's saying all the things that I love about New York. And um, I, I, I just thought it was such a, it was such a heartwarming film. I loved all the different stories it told and from the different viewpoints. I it was just so, so surprised by it. I really loved it. Um, if you could just uh, briefly, if you could each kind of talk about um, the origin of the story and how you guys all know each other and how it all came together. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I'll start. I'm Stacy. I'm the uh, director of the film and I co-wrote it with Jay uh, and I play Chloe. Um, the origin of the film started uh, I had this idea percolating for a little bit about a man who wanted to have a kid. Uh, I have seen a lot of stories about women who want to have kids and the female desire for children. I've seen much less about the male desire for children, but I know that that very much exists. Um, and sort of around that time, I'd had a couple friends who were like leaving the industry, um, who had been in the industry very much and then decided, you know, that they wanted to have families. And uh, I found that decision to be like very surprising. <laughs> and uh, sure. I want to dig into that a little bit. You know, like I turned 30, I was like, what does it mean to be an artist at 30, a creative, like somebody who's still like, I'm in the hustle and I'm doing it and to be, like, really be like a working artist. You know, that looks really different than when you graduate college and you're like, I'm, you know, young and starry eyed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I was like, and I, so I asked my two best friends <laughs> to, uh, do you want to like kind of dive in and start to work on this film and like see, explore these ideas and what we find. And uh, I'm, I love musicals like very much, very, very dearly. I used to do them like my whole like, you know, childhood was doing musical theater. I did musical theater like through college. And then I like really focused more on film after that. So this was also sort of like a love letter to that musical part of myself, that musical baby that still exists somewhere in there. I love that. <laughs> Ed. That was beautifully said. I don't know if I could add anything. I, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, uh, I jumped on board when Stacy said I got an idea, and I said I like that idea, and I'd love to <laughs> explore it with you. Oh, Let us mute. I might have. <laughs> we have a dog situation. I love it. I want to see the dog. <laughs> uh, actually, this dog did make an appearance in the movie. <laughs> Um, Chelsea had a little role in the film uh, in one scene, which was she behaved while we were filming, which was great. <laughs> but our set was actually very dog friendly. We had a lot of dog visitors quite often because we all own dogs and like dogs were just, you know, kind of around. Margaret is like, kind of, like right back. Um, I think this is like a FedEx or a package or a neighbor. I don't know. I like it. It's so cute. The dog's so cute. It's life. Um, it's life. It's life. It's all life. But yes, but now you've gotten to meet Chelsea and she is also an Chelsea, actor in the cute. movie. So there you go. That's true. <laughs> I love that you just said too that you said you're talking about this film as your baby, which is kind of like the parallel in, in, in triple threat. Um, uh, because there, there it is about um uh, you're raising you you want a child as a, a single man, you want a child that's very important to you. Yes. Because, you know, more and more I know it's funny because more and more I know more single dads. Mm -hmm. I really don't feel like I grew up with that much, but like, I know so many dudes that like just want to be dads really bad. And you don't really see that. Uh, no, you don't. And we, we talked a lot about whether or not we should include, we talked a lot about like, are people going to question why he wants to have the baby? A and we were like, but no one, cre I don't think people really question why, uh, at least historically, when a woman says, I want to have a baby, no one's like, yeah. well, why? You know, they certainly like, don't question that. In fact, they don't allow you to have a choice. It's expected. Yeah. It's expected. Which yeah. is a part of the film too, because you're like, like very focused on career, um, which is also a thing that women deal with so much in, in especially in entertainment. I, mean, I think in lots of in um, lots of professions, where not first of all, not every woman wants to have a child, or then you're you're juggling whether like if you want to go in your profession first or you want to raise a family first so it's very interesting to see from all the different because all the characters are different different points 
kind of like of what's important in their life and just in different situations. Well observed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. And it, it changes too. I like, I think there's a point in the film where you, you say none of us, like you, none of you knew really what you were getting into. Yeah. Yeah. To me, yeah. that's such like a, a lot, like, I love that line in the film because like, even if you did know what you were getting into at one point with anything in your life, like your Jesus. opinions shift and change. And like, Absolutely. to me, that's like, mm. just shows, I hope that's something people take away from the film is like, always keep the conversation flowing because like, yeah, we're changing every day. Absolutely. You know? And nobody yeah. knows exactly how like something's going to, I always feel like the more you know, you realize the less you know, you know? <laughs> so. Totally, totally. Which included our, us all diving into this story. You know, we, we, I think you had a pretty clear vision for the heart of it, yeah. but the rest kind of blossomed. blossomed. I was going to say was born, but yeah, blossomed. Yeah. They both perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just, I love, I, the, cause there, there isn't that many, you, films that incorporate music, musicals in general that are shown on film or just that incorporate the element of song that you get in a musical, which I love. And the, the songs and the music were so lovely and well done. And if, I felt I felt like like easy, like those are songs absolutely that would have been from like a hit Broadway show completely. They totally have the vibe. They totally have the feel. Like I, and so how, how did you work with very like specific songwriters? I believed and how did you get, how did you find those people and how did you come about to choosing these songs? Uh, one of our executive producers, uh, Sam Kermit, his friend, we sort of put out that we were looking for songwriters that we were looking to work with. And he was like, oh, I have a friend who works with a lot of like Broadway people who works with a lot of like songwriters like that. Let me connect you. So he connected us to his friend. And then his friend was like, I know just who you should talk to. <laughs> and he put us in touch with Carter and Gregor. Uh, Carter and Gregor wrote the music to uh, Firefly. They wrote the music to Piece of Me. Um, and then our other friend, Dana Ali Levinson, who is an actress and a songwriter, uh, she wrote the music to Closing the Gap. Um, she was somebody who like we've known for a while. Mars was in an acting class with her and she sent me a demo of that song and I like loved it. And I was like, okay, like I want to use this in the movie. So uh, yeah, we, we worked with a bunch of different people to kind of like, piece it all together. <laughs> but you know, there's something that I wish I haven't mentioned this for a while. Stacy's got a great ability to have a small idea and for that small idea to grow. And so when we started, I was told we're going to do one, one song <laughs> in the movie. And then slowly it was like, maybe two. And rather quickly, it was like three and then a four and then a dance was also like a fourth dance. So it it, it grew. And also well, the story kind of tells you what it wants. You think, yeah. you know, and you have yeah. an idea, but yeah. like a baby as it grows up, it knows what it means. And you can't and decide everything. Curious. Yes, you can't decide yeah. everything that baby is like it sort of shows you. And, and in many ways, we were like, oh, wow, we need more songs. Yeah, we need we're going to let's lean in. Lean I in. love yeah. that you did that, though, because I think on the surface, most people will be so afraid to because making a film to begin with is insane. And then not only are you creating your original music, <laughs> not just one song, but like now multiple and doing performances around it. That's a big, big task. <laughs> and look, we were like really lucky, like people like, so we had um, our set designer for the musical part of it, like who built all the sets. He, his name is Josh, he's amazing. He is also the set designer in residence at York College. Um, and so between him, like he sort of set us up there. So we had this theater space to like film in. So they had this like giant theater. Um, we also had this connection to the Cherry Lane Theater, which is like a big off-Broadway theater yeah. in New York. And like, they let us film there for, you know, some of those scenes. Like we got really lucky with like the New York sort of like cast and crew that came together that was like, oh, let me like, <laughs> You should know this person. They're like in the business. They'll like want you. They'll want you to film in their dressing room. You know, so uh, it kind of like all came together in that and, way. And you'll see, we have a lot of really, really great singers and musical theater Amazing. actors who are doing great. And the soundtrack is out on Spotify. And today, today. Yes. 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 oh it's, yeah, released today because I know the the movie's coming out in a few weeks. You have the premiere yeah. in LA, but the soundtrack now, every which I I love the soundtrack, and that's one of the um. But things about musicals always is like people there's a soundtrack which is so cool like really like this is the first time i've ever had like a soundtrack to a movie it's a huge deal like, like this is that's very a, cool 
And like when I went on Spotify this morning and it came out and I saw like all the cast members' names like scrolling by on Singing Firefly, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I love it. That's like a good point too, because you know, it takes so many people to make a movie and it means so much to us to be birthing Triple Threat right now to the broad audience and to be able to honor every single person that has helped this movie come to life, like from the cast and the crew to the people like that supported by donating locations or food and everything. It's yeah. just, it's magical to be able to support these people. Well back. said and put it out in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you said about like it, New York, um, that uh, like the Philly in New York and all these people that came together to help, which is one of the things I love when I lived in New York. And one of the things I continue to love about filmmaking in New York, there is that sense of like collaborating and things like coming together, people just getting it done, which I love LA too. I grew up here, but it's just not the same. There's a definitely, and that's the reason like I always wanted to go to film school then. I'm so glad I did because it's just, the, 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 I love independent filmmaking, first of all. And I love just doing it and not talking about it and just doing it. And people do, actually if they're gonna say they're gonna help you they usually do this <laughs> well said yeah, yeah that's very much our yeah. experience as a community here there's mm. a lot of relationship building like went into making yeah. this movie it's like people we have known and collaborated with for years mm. that showed up for us and initially when we were making the movie we never intended to like have somebody commit for the full time on the crew but people kept being like hey wait when you do the next unit like i want to i want to be there i want to yeah. i want to come back and we're like oh great and so like the movie kept like snowballing yeah. and getting better and better and like bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I love too the, 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 um, that um, you talked about Perez Hilton in it because he did, I remember when I was at NYU, he had just graduated. He and did, he was like, that's right. Yeah, he absolutely, that was, he was getting like, so I would love that. I totally forgot that Perez Hilton went to NYU and I know someone that was at Perez Hilton or at NYU with Perez Hilton, wow. Steve Rosen. Oh. You yeah. know, it's so, like that reference in the movie for me, like that, that was such a part of that time period of like, it totally you, say, you know, check Perez Hilton like all the time. And like, it, that was just like that time period. It was an era. You know what I mean? It was era. like an era of that type of like celebrity. Like, it absolutely. It like captured it perfectly. Like that it was like, like the film starts in 2009. I'm like, oh my God, I still live in New York. I'm like, that's it. I loved it because it brought me personally, it just brought me back. I'm like, that, those are things that were so specific and to that. <laughs> time like it just had that feel I was like I love it and wow. just myself because I was around that age coming out of college myself I just I think any kid that watches this or any adult that has any interest in any of the arts it's 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 very um it'll resonate with them just it's also like captured New York like pre-pandemic and like a really beautiful way like Broadway keeps absolutely. coming back but like kind of not and yeah like the buzz and the exhilaration of like making a show and like walking around the, the packed streets and like following your dreams I'm so absolutely. happy to realize that <sighs> who knows what would have well, happened if, if we filmed that like that scene of ec ecstasy outside of a Broadway theater we filmed that in January of 2020 <laughs> No way. Yeah. So like <laughs> literally like, you know, oh, right crazy. before the pandemic shut everything. That's down. oh my God. That's that's great. Uh, I'm so glad that'd be perfect timing, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really wild to think how much I I, I'll, I still forget that how close we cut that and then everything, all of the posts happened. Yeah, all during, the posts happened during the, during the pandemic, which like made it take a little bit longer because we had to do like everything, everything virtually. virtually people yeah. were spread out okay. like we had to send we had to do some singing like ADR because like all the singing that happened ha was like sung by the actors um so a lot of it was pre-recorded and some of it was recorded live but we had to do some like vocal ADR and I was sending microphones to like you know an actress in Texas and <laughs> dropping I'm driving up to Harlem to like drop one off with Aaron me like yeah. you know, and I'm like shipping microphones I'm like driving being like okay like, I'm like this microphone is like disinfected and then I'm like, okay, like, like it was like wow. quite the quite the situation trying to finish an independent film during a uh, lockdown but it was okay. great <laughs> hold it off I I know I have to wrap it up because I know you have other people to talk to and I will keep talking forever but I enjoyed it so much and it was like so I, it made me really happy to see it because it brought me back to such like a good time personally for myself and I I'm Thank so happy it's out there and I think it's a great message and I think people will love it and congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. So Thank you. So You're nice awesome. You. Thank, Thank you. So you, you too. Thank you so much. And bye Chelsea, wherever you are. Back yeah, yeah, she's not she, far. She's, watching. She's, she's, she's running around. <laughs> she sends kisses. <laughs> All right.